Alright, what's going on dudes and welcome to the video I promised yesterday going over all the features in the new 1.11 snapshot for Minecraft The exploration update if you prefer to call it that I think it's feature complete They're just doing it as a snapshot for the sake of bug fixing don't quote me on that But that's what I figure so let's go over all the new stuff first and foremost We've got a new item. It's called the shulker box. It's pretty cool So the way you craft it is you need a couple shulker shells and a chest you put it in a workbench like so and then boom you got a shulker box. Now, how do you get the shulker shells, you ask? Well, you have to kill some shulkers. Poor, poor guys. Um, they don't drop it with 100% certainty, but I don't want to get levitated here. Sorry, bud. He didn't drop it there. Let's do it again. If we get lucky, we should get one from... Come on, man. Be nice here, dude. I'm trying to show the people how this works. Give me a shulker shell. There we go. Okay, so you need a couple of those. And then you're off to the races crafting it with a chest. Now, you should also be able to combine it with dyes in order to make it any color you want. Unfortunately, that seems to be bugged at the moment, but you can access them in the in the creative menu if you really want a colored shulker box. Now, why are these cool? Well, let me place one down right here. I'm going to grab these couple uh, stacks of cobblestone. I'm going to put them in. Not only does it have a really fancy little open animation and close animation there, which looks like a shulker, but if I switch on into game mode survival and break the thing, you're like, oh no, where, where the items go? They should have just popped right out. Well, no, 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 because look at this. Boom. Well, you know, we still have the cobblestone in there, so you can actually move items around carrying the shulker box in your inventory. I don't believe you can put shulker boxes inside of shulker boxes. That creates some some inception like problems there, but it'll tell you what you've got in it. And you can also store these inside of normal chests though. So I think if you max out the items inside of a shulker box and then fill up a chest with those, you can get something like 90,000 plus items inside of chest. Pretty cool. Getting closer to barrels and deep storage units in vanilla Minecraft. Anyway. So I figured we'd uh, use some shulker boxes to store things for showing off the other stuff. Next up, we've got the Observer Block. This is already in Pocket Edition, I guess, but I haven't played Pocket Edition since they implemented it, so it's a first go around for me. This is how you craft it, cobblestone, redstone, nether quartz in a, in a workbench, and then you get one of these. So this is the side here that you want to have facing the block that's going to be updated in some way, shape, or form. This side here is what's going to output the redstone tick. So this thing detects if there's a block update. There's this like old school thing called a, a block update detector that, that people would make. Um, rig it with like a boat and water and, and grass or something crazy. But now it's built into the game and just makes it a lot easier. So if I say place down the water here, right? Let me actually switch into survival so I can toggle it. You'll notice it outputs a redstone signal and it rewards me handsomely for putting down and removing the water because it sends a signal out to the dispenser and I've just got a bunch of diamonds in there because why not reward you for putting down and picking up water? It's a very impressive skill. One that's very important in life when you're uh, clearing your dinner dishes or something like that. Anyway, that's uh, that's the, the, the observer block. Um, I'm sure many uses for it. I can't come up with all of them off the top of my head, but it's pretty cool stuff. Next up on the agenda, you've got Cursed Enchantments. Now, these aren't really something that you would want to have, so you probably wouldn't want to use a book and put it on a piece of armor that you're then going to wear, but if you can somehow get a friend to wear it without realizing, or, I don't know, you, you pull one from a, a dungeon or somewhere in the end and it has other good stuff on it, but it does have an, a Cursed Enchantment, you're like, oh, maybe it's worth it. Anyway, so let's apply these to the chest plates here. We've got uh, we've got the enchanted book, Curse of Vanishing. And what happens with this, let me flip it around because I know what I'm doing. What happens with this is if you die with it on, then you lose it. It's just, it's gone. Unless you keep inventory on, but under normal circumstances, if you die with a Curse of Vanishing, it's just gone. With the Curse of Binding, if you put it on and you're in survival mode, it's on. You can't get it off unless you die. So let's check it out right here. So I'm gonna put on my Curse of Binding, and now it's it's stuck. I, you hear me? You hear me spamming my click? Can't get it off. It's stuck on me. So I mean, fortunately, it, it protects me, so it's fine in that regard. But until it either gets destroyed, its durability runs out, or I die, it's uh, it's staying on. Well, uh, I crashed when I died for some reason, but 
but that's how the thing works. And I guess you can just take my word for it that with this one here, if, if I die, it'll, it'll be gone. So we don't have to crash again. Because I don't know why that happened. But anyway, Curse of Vanishing, it's, it goes bye-bye. Um, so I guess it's not really like a, it's not an issue to wear it. It's just, it's risky, is all. All right, so let's keep on moving along here. Next up, we've got a new career for villagers. We're giving them great opportunities in the world to expand their horizons and do amazing, never before seen done things before for villagers. So uh, this is the cartographer. He looks like a librarian. And usually when you encounter him, he's just gonna have like the first trade here, some paper for an emerald or something like that. You trade with him a little bit. Oh, he unlocks something else. Oh, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's not that cool. Oh, you trade with him more. It unlocks something. Okay, that's not that great. But then you trade with him some more. And then you're like, wait a minute, what's what's an ocean explorer map? Wait a minute, what's a woodland explorer map? This is kind of cool. I wonder what those are. So you go into your bank account and you withdraw some funds to give to the cartographer for his services because his services look very worthwhile now, don't they? An ocean explorer map, what could that be? Woodland explorer map, what could that be? Well, let's investigate. So an ocean explorer map designates where there is a, a, a nearby... Um, ocean ocean temple underwater temple now we're very far away from this also i've made him happy by trading with him some more we're very far away as de designated by the uh the white dot in the upper right hand corner um in fact we could be many thousands of blocks away from this but if we can figure out what direction that is uh we can head towards it and hopefully find it now same with the woodland explorer map uh, again our dots real real small there in the bottom left hand corner so we probably have to walk really 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 far for this but if we find this area then that little hut there designates one of the the woodland mansions and we can loot it and get good stuff and totems of undying and all that all that gloriousness so thanks mr cartographer really appreciate it very kind of you i'm going to redeposit this in my bank account and I'll see you soon. Okay, let's get to the stuff people are probably most excited about. Well, other than the mansions, which we'll get to at the end because you might have seen the video yesterday. Llamas. Llamas are a new mob and they are very disagreeable. Let me tell you, they take a while to tame. And you just jumped in there uninvited. Okay, you're going to get spit on. So yeah, that's what happens is here. Let me watch, watch this. Watch this. I'm going to switch into survival. <laughs> I like how they, they hesitate for a second. They hesitate, and then they're like, Puh. I probably just peeked the microphone. Dude. I'm sorry. Should have pop filtered that. My bad. My bad. You want to get spit on? I, he's, he nods at me. He's like, yeah, that's why I'm in here. Okay, watch. I'm going to get you stand between me. Stand between me and the llama, and you, it'll happen to you. Hold on. Okay. He's gonna, here we go. Here it happens. Yeah, you got spat on. That's what you were going for. I know your thing okay anyway so you tame them by sitting on them they just take a long time to do but after that then you can access their inventory and you can put a chest on them here let's just do all the above put a chest on them or you can change their color of carpet to something else it's like their saddle but you you, you can't actually control the llama by riding it you can only sit on it but they got a, they got a mind of, a mind of its own but you can switch the carpet out and they, they're really fancy looking cool Cool looking carpets. You look you look like a little Bo Peep from Toy Story or something right now. Anyway, we'll switch it back to green, which is probably what you were comfortable with. It but you were warming it up. Um, and then obviously if we want to put a chest on you, we can we can do that too. By just by, by just there we go. I had to click in the right spot. Now the oops. Um now you can also access the llama's inventory while you're riding it just by pressing E if you're on top of it. Um, but again, you can't control it, or you can shift right click. Now, the amount of, like, chest spots that they have varies depending upon their strength, supposedly. But, the cool part about these is, if I can just get myself back out of here and grab the lead, they can form caravans, so you can transport a lot of stuff. Think about it. You could put, you could put shulker boxes in all their slots, which contain other items themselves, and then, when you lead one, all the rest automatically caravan behind it. So you could have a caravan of llamas all carrying different kinds of shulker boxes containing different kinds of items. So if you need to move your base, this is the update to do it. You've been waiting for years. You've been waiting for years since beta. You're like, my god, I have so much stuff back at my base. I don't want to install mods. I'm all vanilla here. How do I transport my bajillions of, of items? Well, here's how. Shulker boxes and llamas, ladies and gentlemen 
auto caravans and just storing lots is pretty cool. Now, one last note. Llamas, uh, they, they hate wolves. So, the wolf is gonna run away, and the llama's gonna be like, oh no, you- it spit- don't spit at the other llama, spit at the- Why are you spitting at each other now, you idiots? Oh my god, they're having a spit cannon battle. it's like a spitball battle, we're in high school now. This llama high school? It's gonna be the new Minecraft roleplay. Welcome to llama high school, ladies and gentlemen. The best of roleplay- okay, it's gone mad, we're killing the wolf, it's over. It's over. Calm down, cool your- okay, it's- they're gonna end up- the- it does half a heart of damage. When I spit, oh, calm down, guy! Oh my god, it's- it's- it's over, folks. This is going until one of them dies. Oh dear. Um, anyway, that's- that's about it. Those llamas. Those- those graceful, really- really polite creatures that don't spit on things, but do. I- I mean, I- I should've clarified by the high school thing, I meant like spitballs. People, like, do spitballs and- not actually, people didn't spit on each other. That would be gross. People didn't do that. Anyway, okay, last up on the agenda here um, for this world. Then we'll move on over to the mansion. But again, some of you might have seen that, so I thought I'd save it for last. So in the end, uh, it's just it's just a cool thing. Maps work now in the end. So it's uh, just a minor little thing to note here. I activated it at a uh, not very good spot. That was not a very good spot of me to activate the map in. That's not very helpful to have at all. But if I activated it in a, in a location that was less unhelpful, or maybe once I beat the Ender Dragon and I go through the place to where all the, the islands are and all that stuff, then I activate the map there and then, and then that'd be, then that'd be pretty cool, you know, but this is, it works. On to the mansion. Like I said, I saved this for last in case you saw the video yesterday and you're like, I already know what's going on here, in which case that's, that's totally cool. Yesterday I did upload a video just sort of playing through one of these things because I wanted to get the experience of doing it for the first time. You find these in dark oak forests. They randomly generate, not in all dark oak forests. They're pretty difficult to find, I think. Pretty rare. But again, you can go to the cartographer in a village and get one of those maps and try to find your way to it. In any case, this is the, these are the things you find inside it. You can find loot, which is pretty cool. Wool, uh, if you find the right room, a diamond block that's surrounded in uh, obsidian or uh, cat wool sculptures and stuff, but these are the mobs, other than regular mobs, these are the, the new dudes who you'll run into inside of there. This dude, it's called a Vindicator. He, he's the Here's Johnny, which we'll get to in a moment, and, and what happens is if we're in survival here. Um, he's mad, he tries to chase us with an axe, and this dude goes and summons these little, okay, that's the Evoker, that's the Evoker, he throws his arms up in the air, and, and does his little magic guru things, and these are called Vexes, and then he's probably gonna kill me, so I'm gonna switch back to creative real quick before he does. Okay. Um, yeah. So he has his little, little wave earthquake trap attack thing, whatever you want to call it, his ground attack. And then the Vexes over here, those dudes, um, they're just annoying. They're vexing, and you don't really get anything when you drop them. I, I don't think, they don't drop anything when you kill them. Whatever you prefer, verbiage you prefer to use. Anyway, when you kill these dudes, they have a chance to drop emeralds. And then more importantly, my boy here, Mr. Mr. Evoker. And hold on, let's just uh, take him out. Okay, no emeralds for me. Anyway, let's drop you real quick. You're gonna give me, there you go. So again, they have a chance to drop emeralds, but I think that the Evoker always drops the Totem of Undying, which is just a brilliant, brilliant little item here. Now, in order for this thing to work, it has to be in your, it has to be in your hand. So the easiest way to do it is to put it in your offhand slot when you're doing anything particularly uh, dangerous, I should say. And then um, what we're gonna do is we'll just spawn ourselves a, a, a Vindicator. Here, because I'm going to need it anyway. I'll spawn it, and I'm going to let you uh, kill me. Go ahead and kill me. Johnny, come on, Johnny. Wow, he does a lot of damage. I didn't realize he does so much damage with his axe, but now I'm, ba I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. And we're good. See, when I had it in my hand, I get resurrected. Now let's just do it again. Let's do it again. Come on, Johnny. Come on, Johnny. Take it. And now I'm back alive. I would have been dead, but now I'm back alive, and it uses up the item, and then... Okay, I gotta help. Okay, there we go. Whoo! Okay, okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. You do a lot of damage, my goodness. Okay, anyway, um, or maybe I was just really low. I was probably just really low, which is me being smart. Um, anywho, so last little thing to note with the Vindicator is that little Easter egg, as I showed yesterday, is if you name one of them Johnny with a name tag, uh, it hates everything. 
Johnny will kill everything. Johnny just Johnny kills everything. Even it'll even try to run after the vexes that the evoker will spawn, and um, yeah, and and it'll run around. It looks like it's chasing butterflies. All right, Johnny, keep you busy for a while here, bud. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you could almost do like an automatic pig farm with. You'd almost like have have it so pigs are breeding and then they they flow into. A, a pit, and then you got Johnny down there, and Johnny's running around on top of hoppers, and then he just kills anything that falls down there. Yeah, you could do it by fall damage, but but Johnny then doesn't. What are, what are you gonna do? Johnny needs to get his fill of killing things. So then you could just give Johnny the pleasure of killing things on top of the hoppers, and the hoppers flow into. Yeah, it'd be great. Be great, and totally be great. All right, Johnny, that's fun stuff. Okay, man. Well, that's about it for this snapshot. Uh, a little bug fixes here and there, and and all that good stuff. But those are the main things that have happened. So, um, yeah. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. You can try it out now if you want. And uh, the snapshot that is, uh, you can check out more update stuff in the playlist in the description. Yesterday's playthrough of the mansion, um, and and all that good stuff. I suppose I can just take a quick peek inside so that you see what it looks like. Um, but it pretty much it just looks like this and you get the you get mobs you get evokers you get vindicators and um, That's that so um, uh, Subscribe if you're not already you want to catch more videos and like if you liked and that's all for now. I'll see you next time <laughs>